Hello there, my name is Jeeves and welcome to Exploring the Korpuru Sector. Today, we will be observing one of the sector's native inhabitants in its natural habitat, the Zerg on the home planet of Zeris. The Zerg is one of the most vicious species in this habitat, consuming the nearby resources and factors of production, mineral and Vespine gas to create an army with the sole purpose and want of killing everyone and everything. They wish to find the most efficient use of their resources to kill the most people possible, which is brilliant. Despite these vicious intentions and appearances, the Zerg Hive actually operates in a manner similar to our own when it comes to economy. Let's take a look, shall we? The drones here are demonstrating the concept of opportunity cost. The Zerg creates structures by morphing drones into the actual structure itself. The drone is then lost when the structure is complete, meaning it is no longer around anymore to harvest resources. Every time the hive creates a new structure, it loses a resource gatherer. That is opportunity cost. Here, we have a demonstration of the demand for an army and the relationship between price and quantity. Assuming the demand for an army to kill everything is constant, we can use the downward sloping demand curve to explain these numbers. Zerglings are small, cheap creatures that are often made in large numbers. They belong here, where price is significantly low, but quantity is very high. The ultralist belongs on the other side of the curve, where price is high, but quantity is low. Of course, a combination of these units can be created with the same resources. However, using resources to create one means fewer resources available to create the other. There is a trade-off between producing each type of unit, whether it's a zergling or an ultralisk. Of course, even such beasts as the zerg appreciate variety. Constantly producing only zerglings sets up the zerg to be easily destroyed. As you produce more and more zerglings, the individual efficiency and effect of each zergling decreases. Instead, by varying the army to include range units like Roach and support units like the Infester, each individual unit has higher efficiency and effect. Here, we have a demonstration of the optimal amount of employment. Each base has a maximum potential output. In the first base, there are not enough workers to harvest minerals at the maximum rate, therefore becoming inefficient. The second base has just enough workers to harvest minerals at the optimum rates. The third base has far too many workers. As a result, the base has a maximum output, but the individual output of each worker is smaller, creating inefficiency. The Zerg wants to find the optimal amount of workers to get the optimal output. With the resources gathered and the amount of hatcheries present, in a certain amount of time, the Zerg will be able to produce a certain amount of units. This can be demonstrated by the production possibility curve. The curve represents the maximum possible amount of units that can be created under these circumstances. Any points inside this curve would mean that there are resources, whether they be factors of production or hatcheries, not spent, which is inefficiency. Here, we see the Zerg expanding its production possibility curve by producing additional hatcheries, which produce more units. This curve can also be expanded with the power of new technology, such as this Queen's Inject Lava ability. This creates significantly more lava to be morphed into an army, which expands the possible army amounts and production possibility curve. Often, instead of using resources to produce small units, resources can be spent to evolve new technologies. These are like alternate investments which allow the Zerg to create a larger variety of stronger units. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Join us next time, where we will be exploring how the Zerg adapt to the frozen planet. <laughs>